Hi, thanks for joining in on our presentation on our LoRaWAN setup. I'm Nodov, product developer at Sensatera, and this is Thomas. Hello everyone, my name is Thomas Willemaker. I'm the customer success manager at Sensotera. At Sensotera, we care about water usage, plant and tree health, and optimal yield from your field. Watering your plants and trees at the right time is key to avoiding plant stress due to drought and overwatering would flush out your fertilizers. Measuring moisture levels of the soil empowers you to make the best decision of when and how much to irrigate. This can be very challenging in big fields and changing soil conditions. Therefore, a wireless sensor that can measure the moisture hourly would be an easy solution. Why focus on a single type of sensor? Well, there are so many variables in the field that determines your plant health. Well, there are already that many sensors available at the market. So that's why we focus on soil moisture only. We are open for partnerships with other companies to team up with for a complete sensor deployment system. And TTN makes setting this system up very easy for us. Our sensors is what we call farm tough and easy to use. There are no buttons on the sensor, no switches. It's a one-off design made out of reinforced plastics and corrosion resistant metals. They are ready to be thrown in the back of a truck and driven into the field. Scan the QR code to register them and push them or hammer them into the soil. The customer can then read on his or her smartphone or on the website in easy to use graphs. Let me walk you through our setup. This block is what the customers see. A very simple, easy to use sensor, a plug and play gateway and a user interface. For Sensor it goes a little bit deeper. We have the TTN cloud and the Sensitera cloud to get the data to the customer side. The sensor sends a join request to the gateway. The gateway just forwards it over the 3G or 4G cellular backhole into the TTN cloud. The TTN cloud sends an acceptance back via the cellular backhole the gateway passes it through the sensor and the sensor receives the acceptance that he is able to join the network. Then it all starts, because then every hour the sensor wakes up, does a measurement in the soil, processes that measurement, makes it a package, sends it to the gateway, the gateway forwards it into the network, the TTN receives it, and forward it to the sensor data backend. And in the backend, we process from that package, which contains the moisture level, the signal quality of the LoRa, and some other specs like battery level. The measurement is a raw measurement, which we map with our calibration curves, and the customer sees the final end data on their smartphone website or in the open API. Okay, let's take a look at our sensor. The sensor, got one here without the lid, where you can see the PCB, a radio module, an antenna, and underneath the PCB, you will find the batteries. We had to make very difficult trade-offs to make this sensor hammer-proof, farm tough, and easy to use. There is an accelerometer when you put it upside down, we'll wake up the sensor and we use potting to keep all materials in place when they get the accelerations from the hammer and that everything stays in one piece in the soil to do its measurements every hour. Now let's take a look at our gateway. We use the conduit from Multitech and we pre-provision it to TTN so that the customers only need to attach the antennas and plug in the power supply. This gateway is for indoor use, but 
but our sensors are outdoors in the field in extreme environments. So that's why we use the extended antenna from Tauglas and use a cable to keep the gateway inside and the, the antenna can be mounted outside. So, the data went from the sensor to the gateway into the cloud. Let's take a look at the cloud. Let's start with the gateways. You will get an overview of the gateways and when opening a gateway you can see some of the details like the status and the frequency plan it's using. When we check the traffic we can see the payloads coming in live. The payload is then forwarded to the Sensitaire cloud. Okay, let's take a look at the sensors before we go to the Sensitaire cloud. It's basically the same as the gateways, a list of sensors and you will get into the details of a sensor. At the data you can see the same data coming in live as you saw with the gateways. Okay, so now we can move on to the Sensitaire cloud. Um, here we have full visibility of all sensors, including the network performance. Uh, when a, we can see when they are produced, uh, which firmware they are using, which battery level they are, uh, what the signal quality is, and which customers are connected to it. This data is made available into the customer app website or API. My colleague Thomas will go into more detail about this. I'd like to thank Don for introducing us to the sensors and the gateways, uh, giving us a bit of a more deep dive into the technical specs of our product. Uh, and I'd like to get go into a little bit of the uh, customer experience side of setting up a uh, sensor project uh, using LoRa. So to get right into it, sensors are generally shipped in boxes of 10 or more. We do this because we encourage our users to install a system of sensors in order to take, to take varying conditions in the field into account when making their irrigation decisions. So an appropriate number of sensors, what is that you may ask? Um, these are recommendations that we can make, we do make to our customers. Our sales team will help them uh, make this decision based on the field size, the crop type, the soil type or types, and the irrigation method that's being used uh, at that location. And whether this is, uh, you know, agriculture, horticulture, landscaping, smart cities, uh, we've taken all of this into account um, and we're happy to make that recommendation. Before installing the sensors, however, uh, there needs to be a LoRa gateway uh, or a LoRa network in place, of course. So at SensorTerra, we use a, a wide variety of LoRa1 uh, or LoRa providers uh, and network servers in our business. Uh, TTN has proven to be a, a key partner for us, uh, for customers that want to set up anything from a, a smaller proof of concept project to a much larger uh, distributed smart city sensor network. As Dan mentioned before, we have data routing in place to support customers that are connecting to a, a, an open TTN network, but we can also allow customers to handle provisioning themselves in order to set up smaller private networks. Um, this does require some familiarity with APIs uh, and our, the data then needs to be forwarded to our application server. So gateways are shipped uh, to our customers uh, in, a, in a bundle, depending on the customer's need. Uh, and the bundle generally includes a multi-tech conduit, a tail glass antenna, an antenna cable, and a SIM card according to the internet availability at the location. In the case of TTN, the gateways are pre-configured uh, with TTN, uh, and it makes the setup for our customers that much easier. It's, it's really a plug and play system that they're dealing with then. So we've run through the hardware side of the business enough. So what about the software side? Sensorterra has an app for registering devices, managing sensor settings, and reading sensor data, whether that's um, you know, in the field or at home, uh, you'll always have the sensor data in your pocket. It is available in the Apple app and Google Play stores. Uh, in the app, you need to simply register an account. Uh, and once that's completed, you can tap on setup in the horizontal menu at the bottom. Uh, you can tap on add a new device 
scan the QR code uh, on the Sensor Terra sensor that I showed you earlier. Um, you can enter the serial number as well. You can move through to assigning the relevant properties to the sensor. What does that entail? You can assign a location to the sensor. A location is key if you'd like to um, separate sensors into different groups. Uh, so if you have a, a field of potatoes and a field of beets, you can give the sensor a friendly name or a unique name, potato field northwest corner, or you can say 30 centimeter sensor uh, beets. You can select the soil type, um, and we have 12 uh, soil types at the moment that you can choose from. You edit the thresholds for the wet and dry regions of your soil. Uh, so these are the regions where uh, the plant may start feeling plant stress uh, due to too much or too little water. And then you can choose your desired unit. Uh, Sensor Terra offers two different units. Uh, we offer uh, just a volumetric uh, percentage me measurement, uh, but we also offer the Sensor Terra index. Um, we have many different calibrations for different soil types, as I said. We have soil moisture interpretation guides for uh, knowing when a sensor has reached a too dry or too wet soil moisture value. Uh, but we also have a different unit you can choose to interpret the data called the Sensor Terra Index. That's a zero to 10 scale. And this allows you to compare uh, sensor health across uh, different soil types. So different sensors and different soil types. You can see them all in one view and you can see whether any of the sensors are in a too wet, too dry, or healthy region. And ideally, you'd like the sensor to be in a productive region. So once the sensor is installed, once it's been shaken, pushed into the ground, um, it generally takes about uh, you know, five minutes to an hour for the sensor to make its first connection uh, with the LoRa network. So besides our SensorTerra app, we also offer the SensorTerra web monitor, as we call it, available at monitor.sensorterra.com. And the web monitor is really uh, very similar to the app in its uh, features and functions, um, but it also allows you to get the sensor data on a larger screen and see uh, graphed data uh, more accurately. So you can still manage the sensor setting, you can read the sensor data. An added benefit of uh, our monitor site, our web monitor site, is that you can download uh, sensor data to an Excel sheet. And this is for people who might want to do some extra analysis or interpretation of data uh, for their sensors. All of these Sensoterra data uh, for your account uh, can be accessed via our open API. And our open API is also great for uh, resellers uh, or, or customers who might want to plug that data into their own uh, custom dashboards or platforms to uh, combine weather data with soil moisture data or pH values with soil moisture data um, to give farmers, users, uh, a full overview of what is happening in the soil and how they can best um, make their land management decisions. We also have a, a lot of troubleshooting and FAQ uh, on our website that allows uh, customers to, to be more knowledgeable in the way that they approach the, the use of our sensors and also how they use that data to then um, make these land management decisions. A new version of our customer site will be available by the end of April 2020. Uh, we'd like to obviously see a lot of you come out and, and try it. Uh, if you'd like, we have demo credentials that can be used in order to uh, test the site out. Um, and these are available upon request. If you're interested in hearing more about SensorTerra, uh, you're welcome to visit us at sensorterra.com. Uh, you can find more information about our sensors the soil science, uh, the uses of our sensors in agriculture, horticulture, smart cities, and landscaping. You can request a quote right from the homepage. Uh, any more deeper technical questions, however, can be sent to support at sensorterra.com, and me or one of my colleagues will be very happy to help you uh, with any questions that you might have. I'd like to add that we're very proud to have the Things Network as a partner. We very much appreciate the opportunity to present our products and to, to show you an overview of what a lower one setup with SensorTerra might look like. And of course, we're happy to answer any questions via the chat or via email. Thank you very much and uh, hope to see all of you guys soon.